Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for January 27th, 2022. Today is International Holocaust Remembrance Day, National Chocolate Cake Day, Clashing Clothes Day, and National Geographic Day. Let's go ahead and get started. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Our first psalm for today is Psalm 143. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications in your faithfulness. Answer me in your righteousness. Do not enter into judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before you. For the enemy has pursued me, crushing my life to the ground, making me sit in darkness like those long dead. Therefore my spirit faints within me, my heart within me is appalled. I remember the days of old. I think about all your deeds. I meditate on the works of your hands. I stretch out my hand, hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Selah. Answer me quickly, O Lord. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, or I shall be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your steadfast love in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Teach me the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Save me, O Lord, from my enemies. I have fled to you for refuge. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on a level path. For your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring me out of trouble. In your steadfast love, cut off my enemies and destroy all my adversaries, for I am your servant. Psalm 147, verses 12 through 20. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For God strengthens the bars of your gates. God blesses your children within you. God grants peace within your borders. God fills you with the finest of wheat. God sends out God's command to the earth. God's word runs swiftly. God gives snow like wool. God scatters frost like ashes. God hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before God's cold? God sends out God's word and melts them. God makes God's wind blow and the waters flow. God declares God's word to Jacob. God's statutes and ordinances to Israel. God has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know God's ordinances. Praise the Lord. Now our thanksgiving for baptism. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Gracious God, we give you thanks that through the gift of our uh, baptism, you have embraced us as your own and made us one in Christ's body. By the power of your Holy Spirit, continue to nourish and strengthen us in the ways of faith, hope, and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our reading for today is Genesis 16, 15 through 17, 14. Listen for God's word to speak to you. Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram named his son, whom Hagar bore Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore him Ishmael. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me, and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and I will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And I will give to you and to your offspring after you the land where you are now an alien, 
all the land of Canaan for a perpetual holding, and I will be their God. God said to Abraham, As for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your offspring after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you and your offspring after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskins, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. Throughout your generations, every male among you shall be circumcised when he is eight days old, including the slave born in your house and the one bought with your money from any foreigner who is not of your offspring. Both the slave born in your house and the one bought with your money must be circumcised. So shall my covenant be in your flesh, an everlasting covenant. Any uncircumcised male who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. From Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Since the law has only a shadow of the good things to come and not the true form of these realities, it can never, by the same sacrifices that are continually offered year after year, make perfect those who approach. Otherwise, would they not have ceased being offered since the worshippers, cleansed once for all, would no longer have any consciousness of sin? But in these sacrifices there is a reminder of sin year after year, for it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See God, I have come to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. When he said, Above, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings, these are offered according to the law. Then he added, See, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. From John chapter 5, verses 30 through 47. Jesus continues. I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek to do not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. If I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who testifies on my behalf, and I know that God's testimony to me is true. You sent messengers to John, and he testified to the truth. Not that I accept such human testimony, but I say these things so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But I have a testimony greater than John's, the work that the Father has given me to complete. The very works that I am doing testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself testified on my behalf. You have never heard his voice or seen his form, and you do not have his word abiding in you because you do not believe him who he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is they that testify on my behalf. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept glory from human beings, but I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I've come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. If another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from the one who alone is God? Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom you have set your hope. If you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe what he wrote, how will you believe what I say? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So our readings for today. First, we have a continuation of the story of Ishmael. Ishmael is born to Hagar, and Abram gives the name Ishmael. This name given to Hagar 
by the angel of the Lord. Interesting. Uh, you know, we're not told why he chooses his name, anything like that. Then we have uh, God coming to Abram again. This is now 13 years later. So Ishmael has now sort of come of age. Um, and God again comes to Abram. Abram thinks that everything's like good, right? I have this son. His name is Ishmael. He's now almost a man. He's, he's going to be, you know, taking on this, this role within this place. And God says, I have chosen you. I'm going to make you the ancestor, not of just one nation, but of many nations. I will bless them. I will bless you. I'm going to bless all the nations of the world through you and your offspring. I'm going to give you this land. Just speaking again of all of these promises that God has given to Abram. But this time there is a, an ask, right? First, God says to Abram, your name now is going to be Abraham. Abraham means father of many. It also, some have suggested that it is the breath of God in his name. So from Abram to Abraham. So this this breath of God within him as a sort of symbolic move. And now there's going to be a sign of the covenant. The sign of the covenant is going to be circumcision. This is a sign that is only for males, which is unfortunate, right? But this is the sign that is, it is given at this point. Um, and everyone is supposed to take on this sign of the covenant. Part of what's going on here is that you're going to, God is saying to Abraham now, you are going to have a child in just a little bit. He's going to say, yeah, um, it's not in this section, but in just a little bit, God is going to say, Abraham, you are going to have a child through Sarah. Oh, by the way, her name is now going to be Sarah instead of Sarai. Um, but you're going to have a child through her. That's going to be the child of the covenant. Ishmael's great. I'm going to bless him. He's, he's awesome. But I'm going to bless you through, uh, with having a child through Sarah. And God ramps up this promise because not only is Abram now 99 years old, Sarah is now 98 years old, but now God is asking Abraham to wound himself in the thing that he's going to use to make Sarah pregnant. Um, he is he is now going to be uh yeah wounded he is now going to have this injury in this thing that is very important for baby making that's part of the conversation here part of it is a doubling down is god is saying i am going to do this miraculously i know you had your own plan you did your own thing and sort of the normal way that things happen i'm doing something that is miraculous. I'm doing something out of the ordinary, and I want you to just roll with me on this. So they take on this sign, and this is to be a sign. It's going to be um, on all of the males in his household, including the slaves, and every male born into this house, into eventually this nation, is to take on this sign. Um, the Hebrew people, the Jewish people, now have skin in the game, right? Bad joke, but it's good one, right? Um, they are now, there is reciprocity, not reciprocity, that's not the right word, but they are now participating in the covenant. The previous covenant where God uh, went in the fire pot and the flame in between the animals was very one-sided. God said, I am going to do this. This covenant is, I am going to do this. I'm going to be your God. I'm going to give you all this stuff. But you are participating now in this. You are now a part of it, this. There is a sign in your own flesh, in the, your most intimate part, that tells you, you are a part of this. You are a part of this covenant. You are sealed with this covenant. 
down to your most intimate secret parts. That's kind of what's going on. And then we have from Hebrews. Um, this is really, this is one of the places where we get this. We talked about yesterday, the supersessionist, this idea that, so the Jewish people had this one thing. Now we have this thing that is better. Which there's some scriptural precedent for, but it is also theologically problematic. The covenant that we have through Christ is, as Hebrew says, it's a better one. It's a more all-encompassing one, but it is not, that is not to mean that the covenant that God made with the people at Sinai and the law is um, necessarily flawed, that it is um, one that has now been basically wiped away, and now we have this new one, right? That's not what is being said here, or it and that is not the way that it should be interpreted, though that is how it has been interpreted in the past. Um, what the author of Hebrews is saying here is that the covenant of law is one that is limited. It is one that, that is um, kind of a band-aid. Maybe that's not a good analogy, but it the the sacrifice of sheep and and bulls and goats and whatever it is does serve to cover sin but it is not the final answer it is not the ultimate way that this is going to be dealt with now the author of hebrews also cites that this is not something new they quote jesus but they also but they quote jesus quoting the Old Testament scriptures, the Hebrew scriptures from the prophet saying, sacrifices and offerings God has not desired. The purpose, the goal of all of this is not because God want, is hungry and needs blood. It's not because God wants the death of animals. This is a placeholder. This is a way to prepare you for what is yet to come. God's goal in all of this is relationship. Micah 6, 8. You know, O mortal, what the Lord requires from you. You know, how, how many bulls and goats should I offer? You, you know, O mortal, what the Lord requires of you. That's to love mercy. To, to do mercy, to love justice, and walk humbly with God. It is about a relationship with the living God. That is the purpose of all of this. And so the offspring of Abraham, who sees that they have been circumcised, is a reminder that I have this covenant, I have this relationship with God. For the Hebrew people following the law and making sacrifices, it is a reminder that I should be in right relationship with God. There are good things for me to do, and there are things that I should not be doing in order to have a good relationship with the living God. And so if I'm doing those things, then great. If I'm not doing those things, here's a way that I can make up for it. In the giving of Jesus Christ. God expresses to us, I want to have relationship with you. I will live among you and walk among you and be with you so that we can, I can know you just as you can know me. And in Christ's sacrifice, he makes a final, a, a more full covenant saying, you can now be in relationship with me. That the worrying about those bad things in that same way is not something that is necessary anymore. That has been taken care of. Just know me. Just love me. Just be in connection and relationship with me. This is the goal. This is the purpose of all of this. Then we have from John chapter 5. Jesus is continuing to speak, right? 
He says, I can't do anything by myself. I judge, but my judgment is just. Because I'm not doing my will, but the will of the one who sent me. You may remember that the the Jewish authorities have been asking over and over again, where does his authority come from? Who told him he could do these things? So he's now going to lay out his accreditation. He's going to lay out all of the things that say that he should be doing these things and he should be saying these things. This is what they have been asking for for a while. He says, you know what? John testified about me. And you liked him. You liked his words for a little while until he started getting a little bit close to home and started stepping on your feet and calling into question your authority. And then you pushed him away. But he testified to me. Not that I'm going to take a a human being's testimony, but he's one that you know about. I am also testified about by my father. You know, these things that I'm doing, these signs, these these miraculous things that are happening, you have said yourself, and it has been said multiple times throughout the, the gospel already, that someone cannot do these things unless God is with them. Jesus says, I'm doing these things. This is proof that I am able to do these things, right? It's, it's proof. It's proof that I am on God's side. God is with me in a unique and special way. Because I am able to do these things, God, God is bearing witness to me and testifying on my behalf. You like the scriptures. Scriptures are great, right? You read them over. You, you look and, and you search through them because you think that you're going to find eternal life in them. You will. But you're clearly not looking in the right place because you know what the scriptures do? They bear witness to me. They testify on my behalf. They give my accreditation. So you have the word of a human being, John. You have the word of the living God through miraculous signs. And you have the word of the scriptures that you claim to hold dear. That all bear witness that this is who I am. I am not accusing you here. Moses is accusing you. If you stand according to the law, you will stand condemned. So you wanted my accreditation? Here it is. The light has come into the world. The world did not receive it. Because they love darkness instead of light. Because their deeds were evil. <laughs> There's a lot of good stuff from, from Jesus in John's gospel. He, he preaches some sermons. It's good stuff. All right. Those are our readings for today. Let's go ahead and join together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. God of all mercies, we praise you that you have brought us to this new day, brightening our lives with the dawn of promise and hope in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for ministries of discernment and governance. Those who teach and those who learn. the community of faith in your church. Reconciliation in our relationships. All gifts of healing and forgiveness. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We give thanks for the word made flesh was come come among us for the covenant that God has made with us, the covenants that God has made with us as humanity, for the desire that God has to be in relationship with us. Merciful God, strengthen us in our prayer that we may lift up the brokenness of this world for your healing and share in the saving love of Jesus Christ. 
especially we pray for the church in Europe. Safe, clean, and renewable energy. Those who are lonely and forgotten. Those from whom we are estranged. All who glorify you in worship and service. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for the family and friends of Juanita, Dennis's mother. For the family and friends of Jamie, Kelly's 34-year-old nephew, especially her sister, Lisa. We pray for Jan Ann, who fell and broke her pelvis and is on bed rest. For Mary, a friend of Jan Ann's, who fell and broke her arm and hand. For Suzanne, a friend of Jan Ann, going through terrible health issues. We pray for Mary, who is recovering from back surgery. For an online prayer request for Seth. For Debbie's sister-in-law, Linnell. For the synagogue in Coleyville and the entirety of the Jewish and Muslim communities. For an unspoken request. For Amy's father, who is in declining health, and Amy and the rest of her family. For Jeff, Bill's brother. For Jillian, Julie's friend's daughter. And for friends of Beverly. To these we add all of those who are on our hearts and our minds and pray that you would do immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine. Eternal God, you are the source of every gift and the fountain of all blessing. Give us such joy in living and such peace in serving Christ that we may gratefully make use of all your blessings and joyfully seek our risen Lord in everyone we meet. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, so far as it depends on us, let us live peaceably with all. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else. Click on the subscription and the notification button, as well as going to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, for more information. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church, USA, 2018 edition, and our readings came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Thank you for joining me. Have a blessed day, and we'll see you next time. Bye.